Notion is a profoundly versatile app capable of organizing, streamlining, and supercharging your information and workflows. But with that versatility comes the need to approach Notion methodically and to really learn its fundamentals. Otherwise, you'll underutilize the app and probably abandon it out of confusion and frustration. Since Notion's earliest days, I've developed countless workspaces, collaborated with the Notion team and top experts, and educated millions of users. And along the way, I developed a set of core principles for using Notion. They're the foundation of my bulletproof method and all of the lessons within Notion A to Z. So let's walk through those principles with some helpful examples and actionable takeaways. I group them into sort of three phases for engaging with Notion. Calibrate your mindset, architect your workspace, and extend Notion. So the first is to define Notion. To get the most from the app, you really want to consider what it is. It's not a project management app or a wiki, nor is it a notes app or a CRM. Instead, Notion is a platform for building your own app. By integrating docs, tables, Kanban boards, and other features of apps you typically use disparately, Notion allows you to build a cohesive system for managing any type of information. And with a methodical approach, that system can connect your information to form a whole, as I like to say, that's greater than the sum of its parts. That's the crux of my bulletproof methodology, which I'll cite as an example in many of these principles. It structures all information in master databases, then relates them to leverage Notion's distinctive superpowers. You'll find the bulletproof template linked within the video description in the companion post on Notion VIP. And of course, it's available to all members of Notion A to Z. And the Notion's extraordinary level of capability and versatility comes with a learning curve, and the most proficient users acquire both technical and tactical skills. So technically, they understand the relationship between workspaces, team spaces, and pages. They're familiar with each block type and know how blocks are configured, arranged, and migrated. They understand the nuances of publishing pages and sharing at different permission levels. They can leverage databases, including the various property types, formulas, templates, and automations. And then tactically, they know best practices for organizing information within workspaces. They draw from traditional productivity methodologies like Agile, Kanban, Getting Things Done, the Eisenhower Matrix, the Para Method, Bullet Journaling, Pomodoro, Eat the Frog, and the 80-20 Rule. One of the strong Notion users have also worked with proven frameworks from the top Notion experts. That includes August Bradley's PPV system, as well as Bulletproof. All of these methods are linked from the companion post on Notion VIP. And I've also linked to a template containing just the tasks system from the Bulletproof workspace. It applies traditional methodologies to Notion's distinctive capabilities to form the most powerful framework for managing tasks in Notion. You'll see elements of getting things done, the 80-20 rule, time blocking, eat the frog, and para, among other productivity methods. And the best way to sharpen those technical and tactical skills is by solving problems as you construct workspaces from scratch, or as I like to say, through tinkering. Building from scratch is the only way to master Notion's fundamentals to a point where you can apply them in original ways. Only then do you have autonomy in your workspace and the foundational skill set for fully leveraging Notion. That's why I adamantly discourage installing templates. Instead, I encourage you only to reference templates to inspire your own custom systems. Templates are also isolated systems, which undermines Notion's essential benefit of creating a unified, cohesive system where all information is connected. Honestly, the Notion community is handicapped by its template infatuation. Do your best to resist template dependence. And for your initial tinkering, put aside dull features like project management and goal tracking. Have fun with it at first. Notion's cult following is a product of the joy it inspires. Users fall in love with the app as they plan weddings, organize their favorite restaurants, and catalog content from the web. No matter how you ultimately intend to use Notion, learn it through joyful exercises. And that goes for your collaborators as well. Even if they'll never create a block on their own, they'll use your system most effectively with a fundamental understanding of Notion. Most of the lessons in Notion A to Z conclude with a personal exercise that really makes new concepts click. Now let's move on to the rules for designing and constructing your Notion systems. The first is to build with purpose, and that takes on two meanings, higher purpose and feature purpose. You adopt Notion to serve a need and to implement the best solution you need to articulate that need. I like to ask, what types of information will I be managing in this Notion system? And specifically, 
what entity types, and the resulting list is profoundly useful for architecting the workspace. It typically includes a selection of projects and tasks, people and companies, objectives and key results, documents, multimedia and other digital files, meetings and other events, notes, deals or sales opportunities, blog and social media posts, and expenses and invoices. And then we also want to add features with purpose. When developing your workspace, you aim to balance simplicity and capability. That means only adding features that serve a clear role. Users often implement features for their novelty rather than their function. Progress bars and timelines look nice, but in most cases I find them to complicate the system more than they streamline it. And after identifying the types of information you'll manage in your workspace, you want to source inspiration from other apps, traditional productivity methodologies, and other Notion workspaces. Notion is a blank slate with immense versatility and many approaches to resolving any need. That leaves many users overwhelmed and without direction. But remember, Notion combines the features and functions of other apps. Therefore, we can look to those apps to inspire our systems in Notion. Many powerful Notion workspaces directly recreate other apps. If you're using Notion for project management, for example, you can draw from apps like Asana, Monday.com, and ClickUp. For just tasks, you can reference Todoist or any do. HubSpot, Salesforce, and Pipedrive can inform CRM systems, and you can analyze OneNote and Evernote for organizing notes. And then, of course, QuickBooks and FreshBooks offer frameworks for tracking finances. No matter your needs for Notion, you'll find use case specific apps to inspire your system. And in the productivity space, most apps are built around a long-standing methodology. For architecting your Notion systems, and generally as a productive professional, you'll find immense benefit in a fundamental understanding of the most common productivity frameworks, including those I mentioned for acquiring tactical skills, Agile, Kanban, Getting Things Done, the Eisenhower Matrix, the Para Method, Bullet Journaling, Pomodoro, Eat the Frog, and the 80-20 Rule. And of course, the workspaces of acclaimed Notion experts offer the most useful inspiration. But I mentioned them last with an important caveat. Avoid copying them directly or duplicating them to your workspace. In that DIY spirit, only reference them for inspiration. Among the top Notion experts with inspiring workspaces are Islo, Red Gregory, Marie Poland, Ben Smith, and of course yours truly. And some Notion experts have developed Notion-specific methodologies that can be adapted to any need. That includes August Bradley's PPV system, as well as Bulletproof. And my favorite of these golden rules of using Notion is to think like an engineer. Notion empowers you to build a custom app. You're not writing code, but you still need to think like an app developer. And you can do that in four ways. Organize all information in databases. Recognize that everything in Notion is a page. Understand the unique IDs of those pages and how they fit into the URL structure. And learn to write formulas. Behind the scenes, every app you use organizes information in databases. The layouts you see and buttons you click are just visual interfaces for those databases. Those project management apps have databases of projects, tasks, and goals. CRMs store people, organizations, and deals. Knowledge bases like Guru and Document360 use variations of articles or cards. And Outlook, Google Calendar, and Cron are interfaces for events. And that's precisely how you should architect your workspaces. It's my number one rule for using Notion and the crux of my bulletproof method. Structure all information in related master databases, then create dashboards for accessing that information contextually. And this database-centric approach offers countless benefits. To name just a few, it keeps your information tightly organized, intuitively accessible, accurate and consistent, versatile, scalable, automation and integration friendly, transferable and beautiful. So in nearly every Notion workspace, I include master databases for events, people and organizations, projects and tasks, and areas and resources. And then I also commonly include databases for posts, products, days, months, quarters, and years, objectives and key results, and accounting transactions and invoices. And by relating those master databases, you unleash Notion's highest and most distinctive competencies. And another illuminating way to view Notion like a developer is to realize that most elements are page objects. Pages are pages, of course, but databases are also pages. And database items are pages as well. Even blocks are pages. 
and every page has a title, an icon, and content, among other common attributes. Notion simply renders them in various layouts. So when you convert a callout block to a page, its title, icon, and content adapt. You can then convert it to a toggle, which displays the title and content but hides its icon. And each of these page objects has a unique ID, and regardless of whether it's a block, a page, or a database, it also has a URL, which contains that unique ID. And for any of these items, you can simplify its URL with just its unique ID. So when you copy a link to a block, it simply takes the outer page's URL and adds a hashtag followed by that block's unique ID. So what that means is you can open any block as a page by eliminating that URL's content except the block ID. And then you can really take your workspaces to new heights with formulas. They can reference other properties to perform insightful calculations, display values based on certain conditions, render values in any format, and so much more. One powerful example is the alert property within that tasks system from Bulletproof. If a task meets certain conditions, it appears in the inbox view with a corresponding message. For new tasks needing to be organized, it shows inbox. Any task that's past due shows overdue, sometimes with blocked by dependency, if the task it depends on is also incomplete. And then an unscheduled task with a completed dependency shows dependency complete needs scheduling. Many of my resources on Notion VIP, and especially in Notion A to Z, cover formulas. And the more cohesive your Notion system, the more you'll leverage the app's distinctive capabilities. That's achieved in part through centralization. You can centralize within those master databases, within a top-level container page, and by consolidating workspaces. So building on that engineering mindset, you want to consolidate your back-end master databases as much as possible. Any information of the same type with the same structural features belongs in the same database. So for example, all people have a first name, a last name, and a birthday. Don't create separate databases for staff directory and contacts. Store them in the same database, then view them independently. And all tasks have a deadline and a status, among other common attributes. So avoid separate tasks databases for each project or client. Centralize them, then view them in different contexts. These consolidated master databases are single sources of truth, one official place to manage all items of the same type. You can then reference them throughout your workspaces and display them within contextual filters and groups. We talked about defining the types of information you'll manage in Notion. And those entities, they typically correspond with your master databases. It's also helpful to contain those master databases and all other contents of your workspace within a single container page. Among many benefits, this allows you to preserve backups of the full workspace simply by duplicating that container page. So within my Bulletproof framework, a single HQ page contains all contents of the workspace. The master databases are linked as full pages at the bottom, and then linked views at the top of the page display immediately relevant items, such as tasks due this week. And then you'll also want to minimize the number of workspaces you create in Notion. Workspaces are isolated. They're unable to exchange information without third-party integrations. And that undermines the power of Notion to become a cohesive system. Really, you'll likely need to be a full member of just two Notion workspaces, one for work and another for personal use. If you're heavily involved with a nonprofit or another type of organization, you may join a third, but guest access will suffice for almost every other circumstance. Remember that Notion payment plans correspond with workspaces. Before you build a website, you outline it in a sitemap and compose its content. And for a Notion workspace, it's important to create a blueprint before developing it. Google Sheets allows you to stay nimble as you define the structure of your master databases. Create a sheet for each database, then add properties as column headings. Then populate each one with a few sample items. And be sure to use real information rather than hypotheticals. That'll be far more useful toward determining the properties you'll need in each database. And if you're extra spreadsheet savvy, you can use data validation to simulate database relations. This video description and the companion post link to my workspace planner and bulletproof blueprint, which has this planning system pre-configured.
And you want to name the components of your workspace intuitively. That's especially true for databases, database properties, and database items. Remember, a database is a collection of items of the same entity type, like tasks or restaurants. And generally, the most intuitive name will be the plural form of that entity. So rather than contacts or directory, call it people. Instead of calendar, use events and use resources over the term wiki. It might be unexciting or unnatural at times, but overall your consistent use of this syntax will require less thinking as you and your collaborators navigate your workspace. And then the third and final category of our golden rules is extending Notion. And the first of those rules is to integrate and automate. Notion is just one piece of a much larger productivity puzzle. Just as you want your information to communicate within Notion, you want Notion to communicate with your broader ecosystem of apps. When you integrate Notion with other apps and enable automations, you multiply its contribution to your productivity and efficiency. But many of the options within Notion's official integration gallery do little more than preview content from other apps. And the automations feature within Notion databases is prohibitively limited. Zapier is a far superior approach to Notion's native options for integrating and automating. If you're unfamiliar with Zapier, it's a service for connecting and automating apps. It unleashes a world of new opportunities in Notion and most of the other apps that you use. As an example, Zapier facilitates many of the processes behind Notion A to Z. When a member joins through the Webflow-powered website, Zapier adds them to a Notion database and sends a welcome email with an onboarding form. And then when that new member submits the onboarding form, Zapier updates the database and sends their Notion account to my colleague, Franklin, who who then sends them an invitation to the A to Z workspace. And then finally, you want to embrace continuity. A Notion workspace is never really complete. The more you use Notion, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you want to tweak and expand your systems. And meanwhile, Notion is always evolving. Features improve and new ones debut. So embrace this dynamic nature of your Notion workspaces. When you centralize all information in related master databases, it remains tightly structured on the back end so you can experiment with new features and linked views throughout your workspace. With these principles for calibrating your mindset, architecting your workspaces, and extending Notion, you'll create systems for managing your information and workflows that are far beyond the capabilities of other apps. Be sure to subscribe to Notion VIP and consider joining Notion A to Z where we dive much deeper into these principles and other techniques for making the most of Notion.